Hello everybody and welcome to some more War Thunder. Yes, quite right. Now though you're seeing what may look like multiple aircraft on the screen, there aren't. Don't worry, you're not drunk. Hopefully. Uh, I mean, it may look like you're seeing doubles, uh, but there is but one aircraft on the screen at present, and that aircraft is the American F-82 Twin Mustang. Yes. Uh, now, you don't need a degree in engineering to see what the designers have done here. No. Uh, but for those of you that can't quite wrap your head around the extremely complicated design process, essentially what's taken place is uh, that some nutcase has gone and taken a saw and hammer to two perfectly good P-51 Mustangs and welded them together. Yes, in what I assume was a bout of insanity, but more on that later, as there appears to be a Yak-3 which has spotted us. So let's fire the guns. Yes, there we go. He's not getting away this time. Oh, no, he's he's gotten away is what he's done there. Yes, the hand of Stalin has pushed him out of our line of fire. Uh, is he coming back for us, I wonder? No, he's going over there to kill our teammates. Jolly good. If he were to turn around and give chase, we'd be instantaneously killed to death. This aircraft is the size of Brussels, after all, and probably less maneuverable. And now there's an LA-5 who's climbing up towards us. Better fire some shots and there we go, yes. He's leaking like a newly built Soviet era submarine. Not surprising, considering the guns. Now, sir, now if all passengers would look very carefully under their central wings, they'll see something that resembles a pod. Yes, I bet you thought I was sporting some kind of charming central fuel tank. But no, sir. That charming little pod contains eight M3 50 caliber hot dog launching freedom guns. And that's on top of the six fitted into the wing. Now, if my mathematics serves me correctly, that's uh, 14 50 caliber machine guns. And it looks like we've caught this Yak-9K off guard. So, fire the guns. Yes, there we go. Yes, he's all flared up. And I'm not talking about the cut of his trousers. No, sir. He's very much on fire. Very much so. Yes, this thing packs more heat than Satan's homegrown baked potatoes. It really does pack quite a lot of firepower in that little pod. Yes, now down below, we have an enemy who is obscured in the cloud. Y yes, we'll just illuminate him so our teammates can see exactly where he is. There we go. Illuminating now. There he is. Yes, very good. Now everyone can see exactly where he is. Yes, I mean, talk about illuminating him. It looks more like we incinerated him. Uh, but you can't get much more illuminated than being on fire, can you? Uh, so, job done. Yeah, everyone can see him quite clearly now. Yes. And uh, now moving on to the aircraft itself. Uh, you'll notice both of the fuselages are identical. And, uh, well, it seems that both the pilots are identical as well. They are, in fact, clones of each other. Possibly twin brothers, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but I presume if one of the clones wants to go right and the other one wants to go left, the aircraft splits in half. Now, whether the two pieces then become technically airworthy is anyone's best guess. Uh, judging by how it flies when it's not broken, I'm thinking no, it would not be airworthy. Anyway, uh, there's the LA-5 we went head on with earlier, and what a surprise! It's still flying. Of course it is, yes! Uh, I can't say I'm completely shocked. Uh, as you well know, LA-5s are woven out of Stalin's very own back hair, and so they are incredibly durable. Yes, they can't be killed. Oh, no, never mind. Uh, please disregard that last statement. It turned out to be quite, quite false. Yes. Well, uh, now there's a Yak-3 in the skies, and well, it seems we have one, two teammates engaged with the Yak-3, and well, two on one, not fair. Absolutely no chance. There's no way we can win that engagement, uh, but luckily, we are made up of two separate aircraft, which brings our team's odds up to four on one, and that's in the ballpark of fairness. Yes, it is a Yak-3 after all, and as you are all well aware, they're the best aircraft in the world. Yes, uh, we have no chance unless we catch him here. He is obscured by cloud, but that shan't stop us. No, sir. We'll roll it over. Oh, it's, it's a bit frisky. Bloody hell. And fire the guns. Yes, there we go. Yes. He's very much on fire. And oh my god, there's another Yak-3. Can you believe it? Fire the guns. Here we go. We're gonna get this one. Here we go. He's pulling some spazzy footwork and he's slipped past us. Ah, oh, well that's balls to that up. Um, I'm afraid, viewers, we are uh, sort of on the verge of death. 
And so I shall begin my epic deathbed monologue. Oh, no, never mind. He's been killed. Huzzah! <laughs> I mean, yes, that was the plan all along. Yes, um, firstly, we lured him into a false sense of security and then engaged him in a turning fight over our destroyer, which, and clues in the name, destroyed him. Yes, all part of my grand scheme to bring victory uh, to this rather unfortuitous fight. So, uh, well, there you go. I have won total victory in the field. Uh, I am a grand master tactician. I'm probably the greatest general to have ever lived. Really? Uh, you've got your Napoleon Bonapartes and your Erwin Rummels and your Juliana Caesars. Bah! Amateurs, I say. They all ended up quite, quite dead. And, well, I'm still quite alive and flying. Uh, I'm now going to return fleetingly to the aircraft, if that's okay with you. Uh, the twin Mustang. Oh, uh, yes. This thing is, uh, well, it's fast, but it's heavy. And I think I've sussed out what it is that makes it so very heavy. It's the added extra weight of having two pilots and two cockpits on board. It doesn't climb well. It doesn't roll well. It doesn't even turn well. It's absolutely useless. Now, I know what you're thinking, good people. You're thinking, Squire, why on earth would a fighter be designed with two pilots? Well, my good people, allow me to educate. This aircraft was designed originally as a long-range escort fighter, and so I assume each pilot could take a shift flying whilst the other one had a bit of a kip. That is to say, sleep. Uh, this thinking is of the typical American doctrine. Yes, if this was a British aircraft, the second pilot would be dumped into the North Sea and replaced by a large and extensive tea faculty. This I believe to be a far superior solution, as upon getting tired along his 2,000 mile journey, instead of having a sleep, the brave British pilot could simply flick a switch in the cockpit and watch as the other cockpit would steam up and, hey presto, tea. And then, with the very simple addition and installation of a very heavy-duty conveyor belt run through the centre wing, tea could be delivered. Yes, bingo! The pilot could drink himself awake and continue with his mission. That is British ingenuity for you. Anyway, we shall resume the video when we found the last of the Ruskies. Tally-ho, chocks away and have at you my hearties. Two enemy cabbage crates spotted over their drome. Or, in English, uh, two enemy bombers spotted over their airfield. And there's one now, going in for what looks like a rather frisky landing. Let's uh, see what happens. Oh dear, oh no, no. We'll zoom out. Very messy, yeah. Total write-off by the looks of it. Um, very good. And now there's a PE-2 flying around suspiciously. Let's serve him up a dish of freedom, shall we? Fire the guns. Yes, there we go. Bloody hell. Look at that fire. Oh, yes. That's definitely a vodka-fueled blaze. Yeah, obviously the crew picked up some vodka miniatures in the duty freeze before takeoff. Yeah. Oh, dear. That really was very messy indeed. This aircraft does tend to set fire to everything it looks at. I mean, short of giving the pilots a couple of M2 flamethrowers, this is about as fire projecting as aerial warfare gets. Uh, and I imagine health and safety would have a word or two to say about flamethrowers in and around the cockpit workspace environment. I mean, you're barely allowed to use bloody dental floss in this country without going on at least a couple of team building exercises and safety briefings. Anyway, I believe that's about the end of the match. Uh, th there we go, you see, look at that. Impeccable timing. And so, let's go on to the results. Yes. And so here we are, with the result screen. Five kills. That's an ace in the F-82, and we have many badges. Yes, we do indeed. And so, I sincerely hope you all enjoyed the show. I really do. And, uh, well, as it's now our custom, today I'd also like to thank Bjorn Weber, one of my Patreon supporters, for supporting my work of a Patreon. So yes, thank you all very much, and, uh, uh cheerio! Cheerio! <laughs>